All right, let's talk about weighted averages using percents. So depending on how the information is given to you, um, you know, you can do slightly different calculations with, with weighted averages. So here's the deal. Think about a basic average where we have five numbers. They're all weighted equally. We add them together, divide by how many there are, right? That's the normal way to find the average or the mean of a set of numbers. Well, what happens when each of those numbers has a different weight attached to it? So they're not all equal. The most common area we see this is in a grading, like in a syllabus where you're taking a course, right? Whether it's high school, college, whatever, a lot of times uh, faculty or instructors will use a weighted average, right? Tests are worth more than homework. Quizzes are worth uh, more than homework, but not as much as tests, whatever. So they can place different weights on different things. And we do this with a percentage. So if you see here, we have ourselves um, a category average, right? So uh, with our category average, um, like if we're talking about homework, and I'm going to do some examples, but if you're talking about homework, you have more than one homework grade, right? You've got 20 over the course of a semester. So if we find the average of those 20, add them all up, divide by 20, that's the category average. So the homework score has one homework score, and we multiply that by the weighted percent of homework. So we do this for each category, and we add them all together. Now, the reason we don't have to divide when we are dealing with weighted averages with percents is because um, the when you divide, you would divide by the total of the percents, which is 100. 100% 100 is 1. Dividing by 1 is not needed. So we don't really have to do anything with that. Okay, so that's kind of the basic, way too much of me talking. Let's do an example. So we're going to pretend this is a homework or a, a course, right? You're taking a, a math class. You've got homework is worth 10%, quizzes are 15, projects are 20, exams are 55. First thing to double check um, is to make sure those percentages add up to 100 because if they don't, we have a big issue. So in this case, we do 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 55 is actually 100%, and that's what we want. So in this particular case, we're going to take or we're going to find the average of each of these categories, right? We have four categories. We need four category averages so that we can take the homework average times 10%, the quiz average times 15, project average times 20%, and exam average times 55. That is our process. So, okay, dealing with the homework, think this through. If we have, we have seven homework values, we're going to add up all seven. Oh, I lost my screen there. Uh, we're going to add up all seven of these, and if we do that, let me find my oh, balls. I did not write all of this down. Pause. Okay, when you add up those seven values in homework, you get 240. So we would take, I lost my pen, you would take 240 divided by seven. So the homework average is 85.143. I rounded and to find our average, right, I'm going to write my equation out as we go. I'm going to multiply that by my weighted average, which is 10%. That's my homework. Now, for quizzes, I add those three up, and I get, ooh, I lied. This was 596. 596 divided by 7. Quizzes were 240. I can't read my own handwriting. It's a problem. We're going to divide by 3. So my quiz average is 80. I'm going to multiply that by the weighted average of 15%. Projects, we add those together, we get 190 divided by 2. So that category average is 95. We're going to multiply that by 20%. The exam average, uh, excuse me, is 176 divided by 2, which is 88 at 55%. So you're taking category average, right? The average of each particular category multiplied by the accompanying uh, weighted percentage. So when I multiply those, I get 8.5143, I get 12, 19, and 48.4. So simply to find our weighted average, we just add those four numbers together and we get 87.9143, um, which is approximately, lost my pen, approximately 88%. So if this was your math class, you got an 88%, which in my world is a B, which is not bad, right? That is not bad at all. Crushing it. Very, very good. Okay, so that's kind of the most common example. 
let's do one more um, pretty quickly here. This is, let's say we're doing a, um, a survey with a Likert scale from zero to five. I think Likert scales are usually one to five, but we're gonna throw in zero just for fun. Um, so people have the ability to rate something on a scale of zero, which is absolutely horrible to five, which is I love it so much and they get to do this. So this might be, you know, how do you like this video? 9% would probably say horrible, whatever. Uh, the 2% of you love you. Okay, so um, we don't have, we still have categories, right? We have six categories and that is each one of the scores would be a category. But because um, it's also a category and it's a, it's the value, we don't have to find category averages in this because we already have them, right? The first category is zero, that is the average. So to find the weighted average for something like this, we would simply take the first column times the second because each one of these scores would be considered a, uh, a category average, if you will. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we would take zero times 9%, which loving that math, right? Just zero because anything times zero is zero. One times 7% is 0 0.07. 2 times 12% is 0.24, 3 times 62% is 1.86, 4 times 8%, 0.32, and then 5 times 2%. One thing that I probably should note, note you, and you might have noticed this, I changed all of these to decimals before I multiplied, right? So 7% is 0 0.107, 12% is 0.12. It's important to do that. Now, if I add all of these together to get my weighted average, I end up with a 2.59. And I want to just point out why this, uh, or, or how to think through logically of whether or not this makes sense. So if you look at the majority of my values are here at three, right? 62% of my numbers are at the number of three. Now, if you compare greater than three, 10% of my values, less than three, is 28% of my values. So it makes sense that my number is slightly less than three because the majority of the leftover information that's not at three is less than three, right? So don't let common sense leave you when you're working through these things because it matters. And that my friends are two examples of playing with weighted averages with percents. Hope you enjoyed.